Hello ladies and gents, this is Alex with Green Rev again. Uh, we have the environmental director of the town of Secaucus, Amanda Neshwat, with us. And uh, Amanda, can you please you know, start to talk to us about what, what's so great about Secaucus and what kind of uh, steps have you taken to uh, help meet the triple bottom line? So um, we've actually incorporated a lot of sustainability in pretty much all of the decisions that we make on a daily basis in the town of Secaucus, from the office supplies that we buy at the town hall to the kind of decisions that we make in landscaping and to um, you know how we interact with our local organizations and businesses in the community. Um, and so because of that, we have proven that sustainability absolutely can happen in communities. This is a medium-sized community, about 18 or 19,000 people. Mm -hmm. um, and we have programs ranging from uh, tree planting programs to uh, soon-to-be food waste recycling program. We have the highest recycling rate in Hudson County, one of the highest recycling rates in the state of New Jersey. You have the highest recycling rate, not, on, not only out of Hudson County, but in the whole state, potentially? Yes. That is impressive. Yeah. And this is, we're in northern New Jersey, this is a caucus. Yeah. This is not some West Wing, you know, uh, West Coast, like, super hippie area. Yeah. So congrats to that. Thanks. That's, you know, we're yeah. really lucky. We have, you know, um, special conditions here because we have a mayor, uh, Mayor Michael Ganelli, who is super, super green, really cares about that green legacy, um, and a council who really cares about the environment. And so that kind of creates a, gr a great environment for us to get a lot of stuff done here. Yeah, that's phenomenal. And, and you were just speaking to me earlier, Amanda, about uh, the rocket composter. Yeah. So can you speak to us about what that is and, and how the caucus is going to be using this amazing technology? Sure. So we got a grant to get a rocket compost which basically can take about I think 60 pounds of food waste a week um, and we place it over at the middle school high school so that we are going to be working with them in September in the fall when school starts again to start separating their uh, food waste out of their trash and as you may already know about 30 percent of the trash that we throw out in the United States is food waste and it's all going to landfills so why not use it um, and turn it into compost and then actually use it around town for landscaping. Our DPW guys would love to have that. Yeah, and, and then the taxpayers are saving money and you're becoming more efficient and more conservative with your use of those funds anyway. Right and it's really important to understand that I don't know if it's the case in the rest of the country but in the state of New Jersey um, you're actually saving money by not sending trash to a landfill. It is actually cheaper to send your recyclables to a recycling facility and you actually get grants you're eligible to receive grants depending on how much you actually recycle so it makes a lot of economical sense um, to recycle in your communities especially in the state of New Jersey I, I think that is a, a a point worth repeating so you're telling me that any state let's re re rephrase that any city or any township municipality in the state of New Jersey when they recycle, the more and more they recycle, the more and more they're eligible for more Department of Environmental Protection grants, DEP grants, other grants, and it's cheaper to keep it in-house. To recycle in-house, it's more eco-friendly, of course, but it's cheaper right. and, and as opposed to sending it away to a landfill, which you have to pay more for. Exactly. And then you also have to remember that um, it significantly reduces your residential carbon footprint, your municipal carbon footprint, because we're no longer going out using fossil fuels to extract more materials in order to create more petroleum products. Which is so, the, pl the plastic going through the reuse cycle. Right, exactly. Right? And not only that, but you're also helping your recycling markets in, in New Jersey. You're helping your recycling facilities in New Jersey to stay in business, which is something that we really absolutely need. Right, so there you go. There's more. You're, you're literally creating and expanding jobs. So you have the right. recycling facilities these people, hardworking Americans, they take the plastic, melt it down, make new uh, things out of that plastic, support your local economy, recycle. Right. And that is what sustainability is all about. It's understanding that we can, you know, do a lot of really great projects to help the environment, to help the society, but also to help our economy. Love it. Love it. I, I, that's such a beautiful thing. And I, I just have to span over here to the right. And as we look at Xanadu in the background, uh, and, we, and we have, this is the beautiful wetlands. It's a caucus, New Jersey. Um, and as I was talking to you earlier, um, uh, the Willow School with, the, uh, with Mark Biedron, the, the head of the State Department, the president of the State Department of Education, they have constructed a wetland. So this is a real wetland, but they've constructed a wetland in order to take all their human waste and beautifully return it back to nature, uh, swimming pool quality water or better. So this right wow. here is, is, I mean, every single area around here, and we see over there we have the Freedom Tower in the background, every single area you see here, this is bioremediation at its best. Yeah, right? 
Yeah. I mean, all the all the water and and the nutrients, the nitrates, nitrites, any sort of issue with with the imbalance, the wetlands can can ameliorate, can, can return to normal. It's so important, and it's also a very intricate system that is it's pretty easy to mess up. So right. we have an organization actually here, the Hackensack River Keeper, and they've done an amazing job at protecting our Hackensack River, making sure that there's no illegal dumping going on and doing incredible cleanups and also, you know, really supporting the remediation of the Meadowlands and keeping it the way it is. Because, I mean, even during Hurricane Sandy, the community realized how such, a, how important of a resource this was because it actually did act as a buffer to the storm surge that came into the community. Um, so without the Meadowlands, you know, we would be significantly underwater you know during you know extreme weather events right and and you use a really impressive term i think we need to use on a daily basis uh you said environmental resiliency yeah climate resilience climate resi- resi- resiliency yeah and that right there can you talk to us about what that means and, and why you think that's so important well you know so we're taking measures as much as we can to reduce flooding issues because we are a low-lying community we're a flood prone community And so we've taken a few steps. One, we're actually experimenting with rain gardens, um, which can survive in, you know, water, uh, intense water conditions. Mm -hmm. We're also looking at um, creating permeable, more permeable surfaces. So right now we have an ordinance that says any new development that happens um, must be 30% green, um, which means we're not putting asphalt and concrete all over the community when we develop. Great. Um, we're also working on creating a new green park, which will have a permeable parking lot. Oh, wow. So we're trying to reduce asphalt as much as we can in, in new projects. Um, and I think what we're also doing is uh, we're expanding our tree program. So I think we plant over 100 trees a year. And obviously that is a huge contributor to erosion control and to flooding issues. And I just want to uh, respond to some points there that you made. Um, so one, uh, something I just recently learned, if you look at the grass over behind us, if that grass is mowed for two years, it, um, it is the equivalent of um, a concrete or asphalt parking lot. It's permeability mm. it is, is, is no longer as, as uh, oh no, so I'm sorry, it's a gravel, it's a gravel. Uh, uh, it is just as permeable as a gravel parking lot or gravel area. So I think about, when we think about green, you're talking about actually planting trees, you're talking about foliage, you're talking about things that have tap roots that go down into the soil, right. prevent erosion, course go through photosynthesis but i think that you know that was a really big shocker to me oh you're talking about grass fields aren't going to help with with you know uh you know containing the water and preventing flooding well no nowhere near as much as some larger plants and and so i think that's really important uh to talk to our viewers about yeah we also have a a program right now we're another pilot program to um create meadow flower gardens meadow flower gardens yeah because we're actually trying to focus on our pollinators this year yes and we have lots of different types of garden projects to attract the birds and the bats and the bees and the butterflies birds bats bees and butterflies <laughs> yeah, meadow... butterfly gardens meadow flower gardens meadow flower gardens yeah I'm, because you know communities should not have just rolling hills of grass that's actually right. not the best and if we have gardens then that actually reduces our carbon footprint our residential carbon footprint because people no longer have to go drive to a supermarket to get veggies and fruit and herbs that come from another country so um, a carbon you know it really significantly reduces your carbon footprint if you have gardens that people can access and that's what we're trying to roll out in the community more native grasses more flowers uh, and uh, more gardens phenomenal and, and speaking to a garden could you you know let's take a tour down here uh, it's such a gorgeous day and I think that this is a great opportunity to take a look at one of these rain gardens in in progress right yeah so we actually planted this garden two years ago okay. and we're just Uh, basically monitoring it and seeing which plants grow the best in this condition so that we can get those plants and and, uh, you know plug them in as much as we can in our gardens and our and in our parks. Now I'm curious do you have any metrics or statistics uh, with all the things you've done so far with the waste you've removed with the composting Uh, initiatives with the the trees you planted because I feel like you know what you measure you can improve and I feel like also because Secaucus is leading the state and in many ways I think the nation and being green and being environmentally uh, conservative it, you know, I think that once you can show that, I think that it can catch fire and spread to other municipalities. Yeah, I mean, I think what we're trying to do here is prove that it works, um, show how it works, and, you know, we've been reaching out to other communities. I mean, I actually, just this week, I actually talked to someone in Boca Raton, Florida, mm. someone in Hackensack, Wonderful. someone in Wayne. Um, so we're, we're trying to reach out as much as we can to share to share all the information that we have and and it just it makes sense i mean it really makes a lot of economic sense to go green and to introduce sustainability into 
um, your community. It makes a lot of sense. And you know what else? It also creates a community that residents want to be in, and right. especially millennials. Right. So, and that's really the demographic that is, um, you know, starting to boom here in Hudson County. So, um, you know, we're really hoping that it catches fire. Absolutely. I love it. And, and when I think about, I always often talk to people about, okay, when you think about like a beautiful community to live in, a great house to live in, yeah. what do you always think about? Often enough, it's trees, it's yeah. beauty, it's the, that privacy that's surrounded and enclosed by nature, pine trees, oak trees. So, so bravo to you, the mayor, and and the whole the whole uh, city and and the people of Secaucus, because this is truly. I mean, I just know in in five, ten, fifteen years that who knows wind, solar, geothermal, and uh, you know to be one of the greenest cities in the state. And uh, congrats on the 80, 90 percent recycling Thank rate. You. That's 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 impressive like is there anything specifically you can tell us uh, and, and our viewers that you've done to help make that to help facilitate that well like I said the the mayor who was actually a superintendent of DPW he kind of created the foundation okay. for a really great recycling program in this town and what we basically do is we make all efforts that we can to get to the public um, reach out to them let them know what can be recycled what cannot be recycled uh, we do a lot of education with the school system. Okay. Um, we, you know, I, I showed the kids what landfills look like and how terrible they are mm. and how most of that stuff can be recycled and it really gets to them. Um, and, you know, we just take a lot of effort, we, we make a lot of effort to recycle as much as we possibly can in this community from batteries to, um, to bulbs to, you know, plastic and glass. Love it. And, and so specifically, you, I mean, you and your team have gone into schools and did presentations or shown them the, the actual landfills themselves? Well, you know, in pictures. In pictures, yes. right? So yeah. you've done it. So you're talking on the floor, boots on the ground. Here, here we're talking in person. Oh, yeah. uh, as far as reaching out to community members, because sometimes I feel like it can be, as a constituent or as a, you know, as, as a government representative trying to reach your constituency, it can be somewhat challenging with, with email and, and snail mail. Yeah. I mean, what, what have you found to be the most successful way? Because obviously it's working here. Yeah, you know, we really make an effort to engage with all of the organizations that we can in this town, with our businesses, with our school district, um, and and that's what's really been helping. Is everybody kind of everybody wants to be a part of the success of what we're doing here in Sea Caucus in this town, and so that's I think what that's what's really contributing to the success here. And um, you know, in terms of our green businesses, uh, we have a green business certification program at the moment where we're certifying restaurants and businesses that are going green that don't have styrofoam because we actually have banned styrofoam in Sea Caucus. Oh, that's phenomenal. So, and and um, so that, that can you can you say that again because yeah. that that is a point that needs to be repeated. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Well, we we banned styrofoam in Sea Caucus. Yeah, it's banning. Yeah. Styrofoam, why haven't we done this everywhere, right? Like, yeah. if to ban styrofoam is, of course, we should have done that years ago. Yeah. Uh, when I was on the uh, uh, Rutgers um, uh, Council and, and, uh, at Cook College and Rutgers on, in the Dining Hall Advisory Board, I was so confused. Like, why do we still have styrofoam? And why aren't we taking all the food scraps and giving it to the pig farms nearby? So, yeah. thank you for doing that. And yeah, if you're a city hall manager, senator, I mean, whoever you are out there, if you're in government, if, and if you're a citizen, lobby your, your, your government to ban styrofoam. It's a very logical, easy thing. And what have you replaced it with? Some sort of really low cost plastic cup or something? We've yeah, there's alternatives out. There's plenty of alternatives out there, and we're working with our businesses right now um, to you know contact their vendors and see what other alternatives that they have. But our main priority was actually to get it out of the school system, and so we did. We ended mm. up getting rid of it. And so and there's actually a bill right now in the state that's going to hopefully, if it passes, it will mandate all school districts in the state to use um, an alternative to styrofoam. I love it, and and you know as a teacher, I think about that too. It is, mm. I think, most of the change that can be systemic and long-lasting we can do with schools. Yes. Right? I mean, you, you have composting They're going on in schools, right? They are the future. You, you remove styrofoam in all your schools. Um, have you thought about getting beehives on any of the school campuses? Well, we actually do have bee boxes in town. We have about four colonies. Okay. Um, and we had them for about a year now. And so we're kind of, I'm learning how to do it. And our right. beekeepers trying to expand the program with the school system as well. And also try and figure out ways we can get businesses to put them on their ruse because we have a lot of warehouses in Sea Caucus that mm. we could potentially I love it. <laughs> reach out to hopefully. And, and, and so that makes you think of solar as well. I mean, is, yeah. is there some, in addition to the 30% investment tax credit that is currently uh, available and, and, you know, going to be expiring in 2020 eventually as it phases out, is there any sort of other government uh, support within the Secaucus uh, community itself that can help make it more feasible and, and more uh, financially in, you know, incentivized to get solar panels on your business or on your house? Well, um, I'm not really sure. If, we don't give tax breaks in town mm -hmm. for municipal uh, for for businesses or for residents um, to get solar. But we're actually trying to lead by example here. We actually have a three or four of our municipal buildings have 
solar panels on them um, and we're working on rolling out rolling out more at our ice rink and at our recreation center hopefully if we can wow. figure out a way to do it yeah um, but I think it's actually much more easier than people actually think it is right and much right. more 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 affordable because it's it used to be expensive five ten years ago but now they're getting lighter and less expensive and they are more efficient more better looking and yes and they're better looking right which right. is a huge thing right, you exactly. know a lot of homeowners like oh, I want to have a beautiful house and you know and we respect that so yeah and uh, it's not just about re you know introducing more renewable energy energy to the community. We're also looking for ways to reduce our energy and um, increase where we're getting our renewable energy from. So actually right now, Sea Caucus is part of a co-op where 25% of the energy that we receive as a municipality um, is from renewable, renewable energy. Wow, and so can you explain more about how that co-op works? I mean, are we talking about you tapping into energy produced by some solar fields in it's South Jersey? It's a third-party contractor, okay. and um, I think Hudson, Essex, Passaic, and a couple of other counties, or yeah. maybe it's just those three, Right. Um, they are actually all in it right now. And so they just increased it. We had, I think, it was 18%, and now we have 25% renewable energy. 25% of the caucus is powered by renewables. Right, exactly. 25%. But not residential use, the municipal use. Uh, the, the, and municipal that, no, government. that is leading the way. I mean, yeah. government's supposed to lead the way, right? So, yeah. yeah, bravo again. I think Thank I need you. to just stop complimenting Secaucus, but I'm not going to. It's amazing. 25% yeah. of, imagine if imagine if four or five other towns, imagine if New York City had 25% of things that were renewable with all the with all the space on top right. of the buildings. Well, I mean, that's, something that's that powerful. communities are looking into right now is something called community aggregation. Community aggregation. Right, and this is where um, residents can opt into a third-party um, energy supplier contract um, for however many I think it's probably a year or two or three okay um, and they can actually get up to 50 to 60 to 80 percent renewable energy wow. um, in their community so actually there's a lot of communities nearby Montclair Glen Rock and Maplewood they're actually looking at doing this right now and we're looking to do it as well um, to figure out how to do it in a very politically sensitive way <laughs> right yeah always and you have to be yeah. absolutely yeah. yeah yeah so but if we do we could seriously reduce our carbon footprint which is something that we really care about our mayor really cares about he actually um, signed a petition to as a mayor uphold the Paris Agreement um, oh, hopefully we're going that. to sign on to a on an ordinance actually uh, pass an ordinance to um, get 100% renewable energy by 2035 so there's there's so much that we're trying to do here to get uh, I love out. it I love 100% renewable energy by 2035 yes hopefully. Uh, despite some differences in, in political decisions the, the mayor has had the courage with the support of the town people you and, and the council to to be uh, have signed on to support the Paris Agreement so that just makes me want to jump at that message again and say hey wherever you are out there again lobby your local government it starts with local and then it can go global right yeah. so I, I I just applaud that again I, I applaud that again um, before we get too caught up and, and probably talk forever I just want uh -huh. to take a moment here can you please explain what the rain garden is for our viewers and how it's supposed to be working here so this is we got this with a small little grant okay um, a couple of years ago and we're basically just trying to experiment with plants that could you know live in um, drought and water intensive areas because hmm. th that may happen more often uh, because of climate change and sea level rise and you know yeah. heat yeah, drought and water intensive so yes. being overflowed and flooded as well as 